mon ami. Bienvenue à Paris. Over here, we have the tracks of le metro. And on this side, the Eiffel Tower. Eh? All right, I admit it. I'm not in Paris. I'm actually in Seattle. So it's dark right now and it's wet, but not as dark nor as wet as it was when I was driving down here. Treacherous situation it was. Something which invoked in me a couple of incidences of, uh, well not deja vu, something like it. More like Schrodinger's boo. When I say Schrodinger, I'm referring to Schrodinger's cat, of course. We'll need a little bit of equipment to do Schrodinger's experiment. First of all, a box of some kind. Means for making deadly poison gas. We need something that's fundamentally quantum. Like the radioactive decay of the americium in an old smoke detector. Then we need something that can detect the radioactive decay. Like a Geiger counter. Hot. And of course, a cat. Hello, Mia. Trust me. <laughs> or rather, Schrodinger's thought experiment of a thought experiment. This is my hotel room, by the way. That was my room somewhere up there, that one, I think. <sighs> Get a little bit of daylight, how, how drab and, and wet it is still, but at least not dark. However, you know, I could show you the sights of Seattle instead of just this parking lot, but uh, I've got to try and Get some miles behind me. Get some miles under my wheels before the night settles, before the traffic settles on I-5. So, not a time to look around. Gotta go. So the decay of the atom is fundamentally quantum. And in the Copenhagen interpretation, that's described as an atom that is in a superposition of both the decayed state and the not decayed state. And only when you observe it, does it choose to be decayed or not. And since the cat, is all part of that quantum system. The cat is in a superposition of being living and dead at the same time, until you look in the box, and then it becomes either fully dead or fully living. There are other interpretations as well, and I've been thinking particularly of the many worlds interpretation. And in that scenario, when that atom decays, it also doesn't decay, and the universe splits into two. One in which the atom is decayed, one in which the atom is not decayed. And in that interpretation, the cat goes on living in one universe and is dead in another. So there are these moments in time where things split. And that's the sensation I was getting at. I was driving down to Seattle and it was treacherous. And I had a few occasions where things got dicey and I had a feeling that in another universe my luck wasn't quite so good and I had the distinct impression of my car tumbling or crashing or doing some other mostly fatal thing to me mostly and then it would wink out of course the only universes you can consciously exist in are the ones in which your consciousness survives so you as far as you know, will tend to only occupy universes in which you are alive. And, ultimately, you will have the longest life it's possible for you to ever have. The universe splits and splits and splits and splits. And you split along with it. Expiring in some versions of the universe. Meanwhile, a loved one is splitting too. And they are expiring in different universes. 
The longer you live, the longer your longest life path gets, the more likely you are to be in a situation where in your universe, on your life path, someone you love has expired. Meanwhile, on their longest life path, you're likely to have expired. It's a sort of an afterlife, in a way, in that in your universe, you can imagine, even though they're, they're dead to you, they're still alive somewhere else. It's not quite as good as heaven or anything because, well, for one thing, you're never going to see them again. I don't really buy many worlds. It has problems with it. Um, for example, among the things that become more likely as your lifeline gets longer, is the incredibly unlikely. Maybe one day you're standing in your home and someone drops a bomb on you. Uh, now, that event is going to create quadrillions and quadrillions of alternate universes. And if there is the slightest possibility that at some, in some combination, none of the particles of the explosion, of the bomb, of the debris, of the blast, interact with any of the particles in your body. If there's the slightest possibility, no matter how remote, that that could happen, then it's guaranteed to happen. So there'd be at least one universe out there somewhere where you'd be standing dazed and amazed in the aftermath and the rubble. At least one. That doesn't fit well for me. In fact, there'd be trillions and trillions and trillions of universes where strange things like that had happened and people had miraculously survived. Wonder what it would be like to be them. Anyway, that flies in the face of my common sense, which I understand is not necessarily a reliable indicator of anything in this kind of physics. Still, if there are trillions and trillions of me out there, I hope they're all having as much fun as me. And I hope you're having fun out there too. Anyway, I'll be seeing you. And may your life path be long and interesting.